and risk analysis and more details on how to. We uh, I turn once again to the assets. Uh, what are the asset costs and values? The, the cost to acquire them, to uh, develop um, as you are, uh, you know, building a, a customer database. The, the larger you get, the more entries you can make, um, the more valuable it becomes. Uh, this project of uh, creating the CISSP seminar online, uh, the more of these clips that I can post, uh, the more valuable the project becomes in uh, total uh, because I'm covering more topics uh, so you know uh, as you as you develop your your information assets they they are going to increase in value um, that's you know basically the whole idea behind pretty much every social media platform is the more people who use it, the more content is provided, the more valuable the platform becomes, which then it becomes a self-reinforcing cycle. Uh, the more uh, valuable it becomes, the more people get on it, and the more valuable it becomes because they are putting more content on it, etc., etc., etc. The maintenance of your information assets. Um, what does it cost to maintain them, protect them, protect the integrity, uh, ensure the integrity, ensure that um, uh, necessary updates are, are made uh, to keep the information current, so on. Uh, so what is the value to the owners? of the information asset uh, to the, uh, well, or, you know, whatever information systems asset that you have. Uh, it may be more valuable than just the information, can be, uh, you know, the platform, uh, the software behind it in certain cases, you know, all, all of these things can become a part of it. So what's the value to the owners, to the uh, custodians? Uh, to the users or to your adversaries uh, and this becomes particularly important um, uh, well in in regard to uh, intruders and and uh, people who are trying to obtain your information but also uh, situations like political adversaries the disinformation attacks uh, the discord attacks and those types of things that uh, uh, adversarial uh, parties are are going to try to provide uh, specific types of disinformation so that you damage yourself, so that your uh, assets um, lose their value um, because of you adding incorrect information to them in, in various ways. Uh, what is the cost and the value uh, in the real world, uh, in um, the, the world beyond the walls of your company, uh, your enterprise. You know, is there anybody else who is interested in this stuff? Is there any, anybody else who is interested in you not having it? You know, uh, does it have... Uh, a certain value to you, but a different value, possibly more, possibly less, to someone outside your organization. Uh, what do we need to do about that? That's, that all comes into our considerations of uh, what do we need to do? What is the asset value? And uh, what do we need to do in terms of protecting it? And as I have mentioned before, in what ways? Um, what is the price that other people are going to be willing to pay uh, for 
this material? Um, you know, is it is it published? Is it public? Uh, is it widely known? Is it not known? Is it not known in the the form or the compilation that you have it? Um, or is it you know in trade secret uh, type situation? All of those sorts of things. The the value of the intellectual property, uh, trade secrets, patents, copyright uh, material. You know, all, all of those uh, types of issues and, and situations. So, uh, we need to identify the vulnerabilities and threats to the asset, whether it be uh, strictly information or, or a system. Um, we have to look at a, a variety. You know, what about natural disasters? Um, the fact that... Uh, uh, Everybody in Chicago had, had uh, uh, because everybody had uh, basements connected to an interlocking system going back over 100 years uh, where donkey carts were delivering uh, stores and supplies. And as these buildings were renovated, uh, the basements, uh, sometimes the, the buildings were rebuilt on the foundations of original things. That, you know, they were still connected, even though uh, walls had been bricked up. Um, and then somebody dredging the, the river uh, punched a hole into a subway tunnel. The subway tunnels interconnected with these old donkey cart tunnels. Water flowed everywhere and all of their computer systems were in these basements. So all the computer systems went down. Huh. There's a natural disaster that took out uh, all their information systems in sort of one fell swoop. Um, so, uh, what's the work environment like? Um, uh, and there's, there's, you know, plenty of social aspects there to, to consider as well as the, uh, the information technology. Uh, so, you know, what is your facility like? Where is your facility situated? <clears throat> we'll talk about this again in, um, business continuity planning and in physical security. Um, what do you have in the way of access controls? Uh, technically and physically, um, data processing controls. You know, these these come into our consideration of of what uh, do we do in in terms of risk mitigation. You know, all of these controls, all of these safeguards, all of these countermeasures. Um, so review your existing security measures in light of all the threats to all of your assets. And document your findings. Uh, make sure that this is all written down. You know, this is part of the um, uh, maturity models, the various maturity models. But, you know, that, that's your, your first step, documenting uh, what you do. Uh, actually, I think that's the second step, the first step being able to repeat it. Uh, document your findings and having documented them, obtain management's approval again once again you know you've got to have management on your side obtain their approval at this stage of your your findings uh, make sure that they know what you think the situation is and why you are pursuing the routes that you are pursuing 